getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Get it to know them personally with interviews on Rock Made of Metal. Uh, my name's Davey from Glamour of the Kill and I sing and play bass guitar. And obviously Glamour of the Kill right now, about to release a new album in nine days time, as you probably just said to me before this interview. <laughs> it's called uh, Savage, it's just for people out there, I haven't really heard much about it man. Um, can you tell us a wee bit about it? Man? Yeah, yeah, uh, we recorded it in um, Detroit with producer Joey Sturgis, who's worked closely with That's Not As Andrea, Mice and Men, We Came As Romans and some other amazing bands. We recorded that with him in November, uh, actually no, Dece November to December last year, so we've had it for quite a long time now, yeah. but um, finally we're releasing it on September 23rd, and it's, yeah, it's awesome, man, it's like, a, we actually recorded our first record, The Summer, in 2009, so it's actually been five years since we recorded, yeah, right so it seems like a lifetime, so we're just so excited to get this out there, it's a totally big step up from what we've ever done before, and I can't wait everyone to, to everyone to hear yeah. it, you know, so. It sounds like a much more challenging album as well, too, I heard that in terms, of it's a lot more faster toned, faster tempo as well, too, and yeah. stuff like that, I mean, what, what was kind of the influence to kind of, you know, go higher, kind of, tempo than your previous stuff? Um, I, I don't know really, I think it's just um, the change of style through touring and uh, experiences we've had as a band, you know, um, and I think we just wanted to be a bit more aggressive, especially with the vocals, and um, we kind of experimented a bit with that and with the tempo of the songs. Yeah. I've just kind of gone a bit more like gravelly with my vocals and stuff instead of a bit more like yeah. Quiet boy, so. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's a lot more intense, so it's cool. I, know, I noticed that actually. I was listening back to a few, like, your song, your voice is great, obviously, but I was listening back to Summoning and I was like, it was like a quiet boy thing, then I got this new song. I was like, wait a minute, something's gone different yeah. here. Like, I think my balls dropped. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that a wee bit. <laughs> anyway, man, it's cool. So, well, obviously, the thing as well, too, obviously, you wanted that as well, too, and you had something great, which was uh, Joey, as you said before. Um, I heard there was quite a drill sergeant as well, too, from the sounds of it as well, too, yeah? Yeah, I mean, he. Uh, he made us work really hard. I mean, it was it was a crazy experience. I mean, we had all these different producers on the table, and Joey was someone that we wanted to work with for a long time. So when he said, "Yeah," we were like, "Wow, this is awesome!" We did a tour over in America just before there, so we were all really ready for it. We we're all kind of like into the groove and stuff. And then we got there, and yeah, it made us work really hard. I mean, I'd sing a line, and he'd be like, "No, do it again." I'd do it, do it again. I'd be like, "Yeah, I can't do any better than that." I'd be like, "Do it again." I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! But yeah, man, it's turned it's turned out really well, and he's he's his input on the songs are really yeah just better i guess like just cutting choruses and making things short making things longer making things faster and stuff so it's cool it's really cool so, like well great then i mean obviously pushed you and you've got this meal you know, i'm looking forward to hearing this album actually yeah, yeah. yeah so it should be good um but also about that as well too i mean was it ever so there was so obviously you wanted it for a long time and stuff like that then i mean working with them i mean was there ever any kind of point then where you were just like nope <laughs> we're done i am done no i'm not being pushed this hard was it yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that or was it um at some points it was it was something we've never really kind of um, had to deal with, not necessarily had to deal with, but we've never experienced. I mean, like, he had a really big input on, like, the, st um, the structure of songs. And it was something we'd never say, like, we did all the demos and stuff like that, and we showed him on the first day we sat down and we went through them all, and would be like, right, cut that out. I don't want this pit in there. Change the melody there. It was something, it was cool, because it's made it definitely sound a yeah. lot better, you know? So yeah, yeah. definitely something that we, we wanted to do for a long time, and it was nice for him to come in and be like, that, that shit, make <laughs> yeah. that a bit better. And it's, it, like I say, he pushed us hard, and it's, yeah. it's turned out for the best, you know? So you'd happily do it again, then, from the sounds of it, yeah? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> good stuff as well, too, man. Well, obviously, you were mentioning that a wee bit before there as well, too, about the fact, you know, obviously, this is our album, Long in the Making. It was made in 2011, and, you know, it's taken less long to come out and stuff like that, you know what I mean? How's it feeling? Obviously, this is, like, you know, two-year-old material and stuff like that. That. How yeah. does it feel to be releasing this material, which is technically new but also technically old at the same time? It's um, a bit of a weird mix. How does it feel? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, like we've, this this tour is the only tour we've ever like played these new songs live. You know, so okay. um, tonight will be like the third gig, and it's it's like a breath of fresh air for us. You know, because we've been playing these old songs for so long. Like even though we've been sat on this album for a little while. It didn't really matter. I mean, it just—it just—it's just fresh for us, you know. So we're yeah. so excited to get it out, okay. and for the fans to be hearing these new songs, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's good as well too. You can actually now announce to the world that your balls has officially dropped as well too, <laughs> you know. So you know that's a good thing for you as well. Yeah, yeah. 
as well too, man, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that being said, though, I mean, you still have, like, at least about those, that two-year gap as well too, you know. I mean, obviously you've been doing one as well too, but yeah. I was thinking there may be other times where you have kind of new material maybe written, try some new jams. Has there been anything like that at all? Or? Um, We're always writing, you know, like, yeah. we're, a ba- we're a band that never stops, like... Like right now, we're already writing for album number three, you know. So, I think it's something you just have to keep doing yeah. to kind of stay on top of your game. Just keep writing, and when you find, I mean, on my phone right now, just even when I'm walking down the street, I just record something, and like <laughs> people must think I'm a psycho. I was walking down the street singing into my phone, but I don't know. It's just something you need to do. Just keep on writing and writing. So yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I kind of ties into what was like meaning though in a sense because like obviously if there's a like, kind of new stuff and whatnot as well. I mean, like does this mean it may be kind of a bit of a short turnaround for maybe another new album then? If there's like that two years worth of you know recordings uh. up. I think we like to just um, kind of get this out and then tour it as much as we can. We want to go everywhere this album, you know. So um, there's talks about like, Japan, Australia and stuff and going back to America in January. So we just want to be literally touring as much as we can. And then okay. once this touring cycle's over, we'll go straight back into the studio. I mean, hopefully it won't be as long as the last time. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. Especially so because obviously another thing that I heard about you as well too is um, obviously the kind of... The way that last album was handled as well too, I didn't hear there wasn't exactly the best way of it handled. You were told like, oh, you're going to become rich from this, and then you, well, obviously that didn't really happen, you know, which is a shame because you guys are awesome. Uh, <laughs> how did that kind of experience for you kind of mould your kind of view of the future then and stuff like um, that? Like, as a, who, as a, like, who you do avoid and who do you go for these kind of days and stuff? The best advice I can give is just like, well, for anyone in the music industry, it's just literally just not, not to listen to what everyone says is true, you know, because it's not. I mean, like, I think you should take a pinch of salt with everything yeah. everyone says, you know. So, like I say, we were kids when we recorded that album. It was like yeah. 2009, five, yeah. five years ago, you know. So, I mean I, I mean, I was like 19, Mike was 18, so we were only young. So, I think we've we've learned a lot in those years. I mean, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard industry to kind of, to uh, crack, you know. So, But we, we, we're working hard, we're a hard working band, and a lot of people in the UK, I think we've, just been doing nothing but we've done like yeah. done two two tours in America and we've been doing lots of stuff in Europe as well. And uh, now we're back with this album, so we're going to be back yeah. in everyone's face oh, again. Yeah. So, all right, come on. Well, I don't uh, good or bad. I think you'll be happy to know that's probably like the serious kind of questions out the way. So yeah. I'm going to ask this on. Uh, I, I'm going to do a few fun questions. Cool. Um, but I'm going to do it a bit differently because you, you guys are kind of known for your sex, drugs, and rock and roll, so yeah. to speak, right? You're yeah. known. So I have a game to play, which is that I'm going to try and define now the best and worst places for sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or drugs being alcohol. Um, so, um. Yourself, mate. Um, starting off then, sex. What is the best place for sex? And that can mean like women and stuff like that. The best place for sex? The best place for sex. Um, for me, anywhere. I mean, like literally just <laughs> all I need is like 60 seconds. So <laughs> I'm talking like literally now. No. <laughs> so I'm going to go. Um, it, was, it was nice. Uh, I've got a girl and I've got a girlfriend, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, literally, yeah, just anywhere. Uh, anywhere. You're not too picky then. Any you time know. of the day, anywhere you want, yeah, literally. Right. Big small, but in a fancy restaurant or in the back of a mobile phone. Yeah, literally wherever. Yeah, really, yeah. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. Like, literally, don't care. just watch if you want, man. I watch. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so, so I see. It comes to the next question then. So I'm pretty sure there's no bad place for sex. Then it's sex. You just like it. Um, it's a spiritual thing. <laughs> it is a spiritual thing. Yeah. It's very, it's nice. It's nice. Um, bad place for sex. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, bad place for sex. I don't know. Like. On a train, like platform, in the middle of the day, isn't too good. Yeah. Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, anyway, it's cool with me, man. Anyway, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, girls, if you're listening out there, just pretty much just grab them in the middle. Like, see when he's performing. Like, you know, any guy coming yeah. up now. So yeah. That's cool. Go for it. Like, shag away. Honestly, just go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So I'll just come to the next part. Um, Shagging usually kind of comes with alcohol, which I'm going to count as drugs because if I talk about drugs, I will be pulled off YouTube. Um, so yeah, um, alcohol. Best place for booze, basically. Best restaurant drink. And that can be like bar or anything like that. Um, you got great I don't know, man. I mean, I like to have beers at home. I like to have... I think like house parties are always cool, you know, because you're having a good time. There's music blasted and you don't have to spend like five quid for a pint of beer, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... Um, yeah, I like I like a cool house party. I mean, I'm like nearly 25 now, but I still act like a 17 year old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stealing whiskey out of my dad's cupboard. But well, so like you, you kind of prefer like kind of the homely kind of environment then. You just yeah, like, I, I, like, like I like like a cool rock night. I mean, we're all going to the cat house tonight, which uh, will be cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, but yeah, man, anywhere where there's like girls and cheap booze, it's all good with me. Yeah, you're gonna find that the cat house, man, quite easily. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice one. <laughs> anyway, okay, so obviously that comes last question then. The overall experience, as you will. Um, best place for rock and roll, and that's just the rock and roll experience. 
probably a, a, a show, a festival, you know. Yeah. Festivals are always cool because it's like you get a chance to see all your favourite bands and especially if you play in a band as well, like it's just something, you, an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've built, we've been able to do some crazy things in the time we've been as a band, you know. Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, just like playing Download and stuff like, I, never, like, I used to go to Download as a kid and having the chance to say I've played Download three times is pretty insane, oh, you know, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I'd say a festival, like literally, you can have a good time, see some friends, see bands, see some friends in bands that you haven't seen in years. So it's it's like a big youth club of bands. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'd say a festival is the best place for rock and roll. Yeah, it's, it's a huge party from the sounds as well too. Then you know, it's so hey, lifestyle, uh, well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then lastly, man, uh, worst place for rock and roll. Then where would it be like the worst place for? Um, a show with no one there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> when we first started out as a band, and uh, we used to travel the length of the country to play in front of. The other bands, you know, that's probably the worst place for rock and roll because you think that's going to be the end of anything. Yeah. But um, yeah, worst place for rock and roll is a, an empty show. That's always sad. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very much if you ever get an empty show, I think just kind of reset your points of that, to be honest. So, <laughs> but, hey, come on, that's basically the end of our questions, man. So, last thing I just need to get from you, mate, is uh, Jingle, to be honest. So, yeah. Hi, I'm David Richmond from Glamour of the Kill, and you're listening to Rock Made of Metal. Yeah!